Hi, students, and welcome to today's Live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from Central Europe. I hope everybody has had a wonderful week, staying healthy, uh, staying strong and optimistic. In this IELTS lesson, we are focusing on the task two writing. We're going to continue talking about how to uh, write that structured band nine essay according to standard essay rules in English literature. Hi, Rajveer. Hi, Abhishek. Welcome, Fennel. Hi, Sammy. Hi, Ois. Nice to see many of our members joining into the class. This is a members chat class. Everybody is welcome to watch. It's great learning. We will have an all chat class coming up in 90 minutes. That will be for listening parts three and four. Hello back at you, Ois. Students, this lesson, again, as usual, is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Check us out there. And here, I'll give you a little bit of a discount code for the premium package. R4TYJ will get you a 20% uh, discount. So use that. Uh, for general IELTS, uh, check us out at G. IELTSHelp.com. That's general IELTS help uh, On both of our uh, websites, we have lots of help for writing, speaking. We have practice exams. Uh, we have help for all parts of the IELTS. We help thousands and thousands of students every day, I think. Um, definitely each month, tens of thousands uh, to score well on their exam. And, pursue their life goals. This is the academic version of our website here, ahelp.com. Click that big red button uh, to join us down here. You can chat or get help as well. Um, and uh, for the general version, it's the green background at gltelp.com and you can click that red button to join us there. Hi, Rashika. Hi, Nikhil. Welcome to the class. If anybody has questions, uh, just send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. All right, let's get into our writing class. So this is continuing from yesterday. Uh, we started this question, which was sent to us by Abhishek. One of our members uh, requested this. So uh, here we go. Some people believe that allowing children to make decisions on everyday matters such as food, clothes, entertainment is likely to result in a society of individuals who only think about their own wishes. Other people believe that it is important for children to make decisions about matters that affect them. Now, uh, we discussed um, the topic yesterday. Uh, what was the topic for this question. So what are we really talking about here? What's the hidden topic that's in this question, but it's covertly in the question, okay? And I'll make that note here is, uh, be really careful with covert. Covert means hidden topics, okay? The opposite um, is overt. Okay, so these are a bit trickier than overt, obvious uh, topics that are directly included. Okay, so be careful. Uh, not over, it's overt with a T. It's kind of easy to remember these because it's covert and overt. So it's only the C that changes, right? Overt, covert. Okay, remember that. It's a good word or good words. All right. Um, yeah, so um, Ois says it's kids' development. Carolina agrees. Abhishek agrees. Yeah, and again, that, that could be in here, right? Is likely to result. Even if you look at this, I mean, I didn't emphasize this so much yesterday, members, but if you see this, is likely to result in a society of individuals. Um, this is descriptive paraphrasing for children's development, okay? Does everybody see that? You could say that is likely to result, resulting in a society 
of individuals is the development of people or children. And here at the end, matters that affect them in their development. So here, it's like the missing piece that should be here is in their development. Okay, does everybody see that? See how if you look really carefully, you can see these components or see this component in there? Okay. Um, yeah, Lubna, you can use kids for children. It's a little bit more colloquial, but definitely so that you don't uh, repeat yourself as much, right? Okay. Yeah, Rajveer, you could think about it that way, but at the end of the day, to simplify it, Rajveer, when you're talking about future societies of individuals, as I mentioned here, you're really uh, talking about children's development because children's development equals future society of individuals, right? You see, you see what I mean, Rajveer? So we're basically discussing the progression to adulthood, right? which is the future society of individuals, okay? So we're, we're on this, yeah, exactly, Reggie. They're, they're more or less the same, right? It, and I think children's development is just a little bit clearer. It's a clearer way to say it. Okay, um, all right, so uh, we did the, uh, the introduction and the thesis, okay? Uh, here's the introduction from yesterday, so let's just go over this. And then we'll get cracking on the body paragraphs. So introduction, uh, the goal of good parenting is empowering children to develop well, right? So right away, I basically, and here it's really nice to put the word develop into the hook, okay? Because I'm showing the examiner right away that I've identified the goal of this question and the topic of this question, okay? So the goal of good parenting is empowering children to develop well, okay? All humans are required to make millions of decisions. And then here I show the examiner that, hey, okay, look, I, I see it's about development and I hear, see it's about decision making. So uh, decisions throughout their lives and their capacity to do this. Capacity is a fancier way to say ability. So their ability to do this has a direct effect on their happiness. Now notice, members, how um, I'm always paying attention to adding descriptive language. So instead of simply saying, do this has an effect, that would be okay. So I could say, this has an effect on their happiness, but it has a direct effect. There's a little bit more descriptive for the reader, okay? On their happiness and success. Certain individuals restrict, okay? So when, so again, here I'm being concise, right? Instead of saying parents don't allow their children, instead of saying parents don't allow, I say restrict, okay? So again, someone asked me, uh, how can you be more concise? Vocabulary is absolutely one of the methods of being uh, more concise. So certain individuals restrict their children's decisions because they want to make sure that their kids always go down the right path. Okay. Others, however, give freedom of choice to their kids so that they develop independence. Okay. So here I'm simplifying. I don't want to include too many ideas. So correct path and uh, develop independence. Those are my uh, arguments for the two sides, right? Remember the question says, discuss both sides, and then give your own opinion. I believe that a balance of both, whereby parents guide their children's decisions, is best for children's development. Okay, um, so... Members, what do you think? What's the best way to structure the rest of this essay? So how would you do it? Um, the question here, to be more specific, okay, is uh, how many body paragraphs and what is included? Okay, answer this question for me. So in this, how many body paragraphs, forget the conclusion, the conclusion will come at the end, of course, 
But how many body paragraphs would you choose to write for this? For Dov's, yeah, there you go. So for Dov says, I would choose to write three. Yeah. Okay, sure. Um, I think that's an approach. Yeah, Rajvir says, I would choose to do three. Yeah, um, you could do two. Uh, doing three might be a little bit more sensible in this case. So I would probably choose to do three as well because it's difficult to integrate um, this idea of both into each one of these. Now, you could do two. So you could do one where you combine, um, you could do it like this, okay? So it's, it's one way. So option one, uh, two paragraphs, okay? Uh, first paragraph, um, both sides, okay? And second paragraph, uh, my opinion. Okay, I could choose to do it that way. It, it is possible, all right? Um, however, it, I think that option two here is what I would choose as well, okay? Option two would be three paragraphs, okay? Um, first, is restricting choice. Second, uh, is freedom of choice. And third is my opinion. So I think that is the most sensible. Now, uh, here, what you have to be careful about is uh, make sure to write concise paragraphs uh, so you do not run out of time and space, okay? So that's what you have to be careful about. Everybody's clear on that? So we're gonna go with option two in this case and um, We'll start with body paragraph one, which is restricting choice. Um, the reason why I want to start with restricting choice anyway is because, in my opinion, it's what I least agree with. So if I, if I had to choose between either restricting choice or giving freedom of choice, I would probably give freedom of choice. Uh, it, neither will lead to a necessarily successful, happy life in the end, um, but at least uh, in the second one, kids get to do what they want, not what their parents want. So um, if I had to choose between the two, then I would still choose uh, freedom of choice, okay? All right, so let's do body one. And again, keep it concise, okay? I really want you to focus on uh, minimizing your word use while uh, retaining, keeping the information, Okay. Yeah, so Tito, yeah, see how you're on the same same path too. Three paragraphs, right? Um, Lubna, mixing our own opinion here would be, I think, confusing. I think that's why everybody is saying let's write three because if you mix your opinion with either one of these, I think the transition is quite awkward. Okay, all right. Yeah, exactly, Rajvir. So if in order to save some time, you might want to omit the example. So Rajvir is asking a really good question here. So Rajvir says, if I want to save some time and if I want to make sure I'm not writing 400 words, uh, can I omit the example? Yes, you can, Rajvir, absolutely. Where do you think, I wouldn't omit it everywhere, where do you, th or in all of the paragraphs, where would you omit the example and where do you think it might be a good idea to include the example? So which paragraphs? Okay, while you're thinking about that, we'll get going on body one. So body one is about restricting uh, choice for right decisions for best decisions. So write a topic sentence for this, okay? With greater definition. 
All right. Uh, no, for Dobbs, I would not do it on the third. I would actually do it on the first and the second. So where I would definitely include the example is with my opinion. Okay. Yeah. So exactly, Rajvir. So even on the even on the second one. So either restricting choices or giving freedom of, freedom of choice. You can omit the example. Definitely don't omit the example. Uh, for your own opinion, because that example will strengthen your opinion. So still keep the example for your opinion, but you could omit the example for the first two. It makes logical sense. Is everybody clear on that? So that was a really good question by Rajvir. It was an important point when you have a lot of content for your essay, a lot of questions being asked by the task two question. Don't omit the example for your opinion. Omit it for the other um uh, top or uh, controlling ideas. Okay. All right. Mahi, they provide a, enough of, um, they, they provide you an extra sheet for your planning, Mahi. There's extra space for that. Um, and then uh, if you go online, you can see the template for how much space they provide for your writing on the paper-based exam. Okay. All right. So... Let's see, Pradabs, I, I can see that you started already. Okay, no no worries. I know that you've put it up there twice. So uh, Pradabs says, having less experience in intelligent children tends to make poor decisions in daily life and parents are responsible for fixing them. Um, okay, you need a really important comma there, Pradabs. So having less experience and intelligence, comma, Children tend to make poor decisions in daily life and parents are responsible uh, for helping them, okay? Fixing them, I think, is a little bit awkward. Helping them. Um, also, for dogs, I wouldn't say less intelligence. Intelligence is always measured according to age. So children don't have less intelligence than adults, they just have less experience. Intelligence is always measured within an age group. You never compare intelligence of a two-year-old to a 20-year-old, okay? So it doesn't make sense to say less intelligence. You can only say this two-year-old has less intelligence than that two-year-old, but you can't say this two-year-old has less intelligence than that 20-year-old. You can't measure that, okay? So careful with that logic and information mistake, okay? Oh, it says, it is not bad when parents take extra care about their kids as controlling their decisions as choose their food or enjoyment or clothes because parents only know children's interests and how they are. Okay, oh, it's way too long. Remember, we're writing three body paragraphs, so you need to keep it shorter, oh, it's, This is a good example of being concise. Firstly, oh, it's, it is not bad. Instead of saying not bad, right, it is good, Okay. Not bad is a double negative. You want to avoid double negatives anyway in your writing. Okay, so instead of not bad, it's good. Okay, or acceptable. Okay, but don't use double negatives. All right, let's see if we got some more for the topic sentence. Being concise here is very important, especially for these first couple of paragraphs. Okay. Uh, Rajvir says, by controlling their children's decision-making process, comma, parents ensure that their kids make the best choices for food, attire, and entertainment daily. Okay. Yeah, I think that works well, Rajvir. It's definitely a deeper um, definition. Tito says, parents tend to make restrictions in order to make their children's life better and more confident. Okay, good. So, Tito, you're already going into your uh, explanation. And that's another trick that you can do here, especially if the ideas aren't too complex. You can go from the topic sentence into the explanation. Now, I've never talked about this, but you can, in fact, have a topic sentence that's combined with an explanation, okay? And if you're being really concise, as in this case, because you have a lot of writing or a lot of content, I should say a lot of content, then it might be a good idea to do that, yeah. So uh, Fennel, I think you're doing the same, which is smart. So due to competitive surroundings, parents unknowingly dominate their children's decisions 
um, to the best of their experience, something like that. I think Fennel, the end there needs a little bit of change. Okay. Sammy says, certain parents instruct kids to make better choices. This helps not only children, but also create good society. So you have two sentences there, Sammy, and you're going from topic to explanation, right? Okay, good. So I'm going to do my own while you keep thinking about it. Now, start thinking about your explanation and maybe an example, okay? So here we go. Okay, so here's an example of topic in combination with um, uh, an explanation. And I'm being very concise here, even though it seems like a long sentence, there's a lot of content here. Okay, so certain parents control their children's daily decisions on diet, exercise, and learning because they believe that they know better what has beneficial results and they desire to minimize harm and maximize benefit for their offspring, okay? So notice how much is in there. Now, if I want to um, be a little bit more relative to the question, then I'll put clothing in there as well, okay? All right, um, so now uh, I might write uh, an example right away. Okay, so staying concise, going right into an example. All right. Okay, let's see what you come up with for uh, explanations and also start thinking of examples here too. So I'm going to show you how you can get into examples, okay? So Sammy says, when elders suggest children uh, in their decision making, children may not uh, make as many mistakes to build their careers and... Uh, live a healthy life. Okay, Sammy, good. A little bit awkward in the phrasing, but good ideas. Um, again, Sammy, try to think of the positive instead of the negative. Instead of what they do not do, think about what they do do, and then don't double. Okay. Uh, Ferdov says, children's decisions are usually made by observing appearance, beauty, color, which most of the time are misleading. Uh, not most of the time for dogs, but oftentimes. And now again, that's negative, right? So think about the positive. Uh, for dogs, moreover, kids love delicious dishes and beverages without noticing how much re refined sugar and fat um, is uh, in the meals. And parents are aware of the drawbacks and can stop their children from consuming too much food. Uh, for Dobbs, I would use that as my example, okay? So, um,
Okay, so I'm going to use your uh, response there, Ferdovs, for um, my example. So uh, I noticed that my friend Andrew never allows his four-year-old son Alex to eat what he desires. Instead, he's all, he is always feeding him with fruits, vegetables, and fish. Otherwise, Alex would eat chocolate for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay. All right. Um, so, uh, OS says, because I dressed my boy f five to six years every day before school until now, he cannot get dressed by himself and he's become very dependent. Also, his food and his bath. Okay, OS, I think you're on the right track there. So, you're talking about the negative. That's how I would connect here. Okay. So, I would use the negative to connect to my next body paragraph. It's a good way to make uh, connections between your body paragraphs when you have opposing ideas. Okay, so I'm going to do that now in a minute and you'll see what I mean. All right. Abhishek says, confident parents are strict with their kids for day-to-day -day activities such as diet, clothing, exercise, and education. Not only uh, do they become their ideal role model, but also they want to secure their children to move in a positive path. Abhishek, I don't think role model is a concept you should introduce here. It's off topic. Okay. Sammy says, like when I was a kid, my mother always encouraged me to have some homely food. She always fulfilled my wishes by making healthy food. And this way I can say that I was healthy because of her care and instructions. Sammy, careful with that. I think you have a really good example. However, Sammy, I think your example should be saved for the third body paragraph where we talk about guided decisions. I don't know if you caught the thesis, Sammy, but remember the thesis? I believe that a balance of both whereby parents guide their children's decisions is the best for their development. And I think that that's um, where your example is most accurate. Okay. So careful, make sure that your example doesn't accidentally, uh, fit better with one of your later paragraphs. Okay. All right. So, um, nevertheless, this leads children to a lack of confidence when needing to make choices. Okay, so this is my connecting sentence here now. Of course, if I had more time, if I had a longer um, opportunity to explain myself, I'd probably give further explanation with Alex here. But instead, I'm just going to go to my next paragraph, which focuses on allowing children to build independence. Okay, so nevertheless, this leads children like Alex to lack uh, confidence when needing to make choices. Okay. So now I go to my body paragraph two and I start my topic sentence here. And here my topic sentence is a freedom of choice for independence. Okay. So In light of this notion, many parents encourage their children to make choices for themselves and to learn uh, from their own mistakes by allowing them to eat wear and watch whatever they want. Okay. 
So here I'm using this last sentence of uh, my first body paragraph to springboard into my second body paragraph. Okay. Is everybody following me so far? I know it, I'm moving along uh, at a fairly good pace here simply because we are writing three body paragraphs and I'd like to get through it. And I know many of you have lots of experience now with me, so I'm not too scared that I'm going to lose you. Is everybody with me so far? Tito, Ferdov, Zoa, Sabishek, are you with me, honey? You're good so far? All right. So this is what it looks like. Certain parents control their children's daily decisions on diet, clothing, exercise, and learning because they believe that they know better what has beneficial results, and they desire to minimize harm and maximize benefit for their offspring. I noticed that my friend Andrew never allows his four-year-old son Alex to eat what he desires. Instead, he is always feeding him with fruits, vegetables, and fish. Otherwise, Alex would eat chocolate for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Nevertheless, this leads children, like Alex, to lack confidence when needing to make choices. In light of this notion, many parents encourage their children to make choices for themselves and to learn from their own mistakes by allowing them to eat, wear, and watch whatever they want. Okay, you see the flow of information there, right? Okay. So here... I'm going to switch to my friend Susan. All right. So Ois says parents who do not control their kids' choices um, provide more comfort than others because kids grow up with confidence and develop their brain and always make the right choices. For Dov says if parents do not interfere when kids make poor decisions, their children learn a lot from their mistakes and start thinking broadly before making decisions. Good. For Dobbs, you're writing faster, so careful with your mistakes. Uh, don't use will, okay? I almost did that as well, and then I caught myself and realized, wait a second, I shouldn't jump into the future. With essays, I always want to stay in the present tense, so I want to avoid that future participle will, okay? That can really offset the tense and the tone of your writing, so careful with that, okay? Tito says, nevertheless, studies have shown that by giving children uh, some control of, over their life decisions leads them to be confident. They make their own choices and decisions. Moreover, this way, they mature faster. Okay, Tito, not bad. Tito, don't double up, okay? They make their own choices and decisions. It's the same. Choices and decisions, is, they're synonyms, okay? So one or the other, all right? Uh, remember, we have to be concise here because we have three body paragraphs, okay? All right. Um, Sammy says, my brother at the age of 13 wanted to quit his studies and my parents could not do anything uh, about his decision. However, later he understood that education is important by seeing his peers and he continued his studies. Okay, Sammy, so that's your example, right? It's good, okay? Uh, Sammy, no contractions, could not do, okay? All right. Rajveer says, when children make bad decisions for food, clothes, and enjoyment, they learn from their failures and do not repeat them in the future. 
as well they learn how they learn the best ways to analyze decisions and make the best decisions something like that Rajbir so analyzing and making good decisions okay so uh, in light of this notion many parents encourage their children to make choices for themselves and to learn from their own mistakes by allowing them to eat wear and watch whatever they want my friend Susan lets her eight-year-old son, Tim, watch violent superhero cartoons because she feels that he enjoys this more than watching educational shows and that he can learn right from wrong in other ways and develop a sense of independence quickly. Okay, because we have independence here. Okay. All right, so far so good. Okay, so far so good. Um, how did I end my last one? So if I have a connecting concluding sentence, this one, uh, the first body paragraph, nevertheless, this leads children like Alex to lack confidence when needing to make choices. However, at times, this can be risky as highly independent children may encounter uh, much conflict in their upbringing or during their upbringing in society okay all right so now uh we switch to body paragraph three which is my opinion a balance of both uh, guided uh, decisions okay so here I can now continue with therefore therefore I believe that the optimal approach for children's decision making process is to give kids the ability to choose within certain parameters and with feedback okay all right so now i'm leading into my opinion which is a balance of both and i'm um, including uh, both ideas here okay so the guided decision with a bit more definition right so giving kids the ability to choose giving them parameters and giving them feedback okay lubna says however too much independence can spoil young minds i think that's a great connecting sentence lubna so if that's your last sentence for your second body paragraph you're definitely on the right path you can continue with this sentence and it would sound really nice therefore i believe that the optimal approach for children's decision making uh process um is to give the kids the ability to choose within certain parameters and with feedback. Okay. Ois says, I think, not thing, I think it is useful when we allow our kids freedom to choose, but their process should be uh, careful because kids 
are facing more risks. Okay, OS, I think you're going a little bit off topic. Careful, careful. Okay, I know you're typing faster, and that's good. Building fluency is good. Sammy says, thus making um, their own decisions and also seeking parents' guidance would definitely help children to have a bright future. Mm -hmm. Ferdov says, in my opinion, a balanced approach is the most beneficial as children learn to be disciplined and develop critical reasoning skills. Very nice, Ferdovs. I really like that uh, topic sentence for uh, body paragraph three. It's great. Uh, Rajveer says, in my opinion, parents should use a balanced approach by letting their kids make their own decisions for daily activities and also provide the necessary guidance for optimal development. Very good, Rajveer. Very nice. Okay. All right. Um, in this way, so here's my explanation. In this way, children are not only kept safe and happy, but also encouraged to develop critical thinking and um, self reliance instead of independence which will which is of great benefit for them and society okay so in fact with my four years old daughter Sabella I always discuss options for food and entertainment whereby she gets to choose from a healthy selection as a result I feel that she is confident in making her own choices while um, developing uh, nicely both mentally and physically. Okay, so there is uh, my uh, example, okay? All right, so keeping these paragraphs fairly concise down to about 50, 60 words, so minimizing word count here as much as possible, okay? If they're about 50, 60 words, you're on the right track three times Let's say 60 is about 180, and then you have another, let's say, 80 for your introduction. So you're up at uh, 270, and then you have about 30, 40 for your conclusion. So you're at about 300, 310. Okay? All right. Uh, so um, let's do the conclusion. Let's wrap this up. All right? Yeah, so always the reason why I put an example into each paragraph is because I was able to combine my topic sentence with my explanation for the first two body paragraphs. But if I can't do that, if I have more explanation and it's separate from my topic sentence, then I might just skip the uh, examples so that I still have time and space to finish the essay. Okay. So Lubna says, now I am a confident person because my parents never dominated my decision making, but guided me uh, through each of my decisions. Yeah, very good. So Lubna, that's where you can come up with this kind of example exactly. So Ferdov says, in my opinion, a balanced approach is the most beneficial as children learn to be disciplined and develop their critical reasoning skills. Yeah, I, I read that before, Ferdov. That was fantastic. Okay, let's write a conclusion. So... Here we go, and just let me uh, 
get us back on uh, screen here. Just give me a moment. See, I even let my camera make its own decisions and sometimes it chooses not to cooperate. So maybe with cameras, it's better to restrict the decision-making process. All right, um, here we go. So with the conclusion, all right, conclusion. In conclusion, there are logical reasons for both parenting styles, those parents that give great freedom to their kids and those that do not. However, an extreme in each case does carry with it negative repercussions. Repercussions? Repercussions are consequences. Repercussions. There we go. All right. And then, uh, so it is my belief that a balanced approach allows for or provides optimal nurturing of offspring, which in turn leads to a uh, successful successful and prosperous future society. Okay, and that's my conclusion. All right. Okay, so uh, let's see what you have. Lubna, in conclusion, you're on, you got the start going, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Sammy says, children must depend on parents for certain life uh, situations. Uh, and they must share their own ideas as well. My uh, friend's son, Peter, always seeks his father's advice while providing his own input. Okay, Sammy, some um, corrections and make it concise. Okay, be concise. This helps Peter always come up with success in sports, education, and entertainment. Lubna says, in conclusion, neither restrictive decision-making nor too much independence for kids can be a benefit alone. However, a balance of both can carve confidence for individual generations. Very nice, Lubna. I made a couple of adjustments, but overall, some really nice uh, writing and thinking. Okay, that's impressive. Very well done. Uh, Rajvir says, in conclusion, certain parents opt to control decision-making of their kids to make better choices for success while others give freedom and do not interfere with their children's everyday activities. Okay, good. I think you have another sentence coming, Rajvir, but it's a fantastic start. Oh, it says kids' developments uh, necessarily is appropriate because in gener the generation's development and society relates to them. Oh, it's again, work on putting together the right grammar and words, okay? Ferdov says, in conclusion, restricting children's choices or giving a lot of freedom for daily life decisions is not the best parenting style as both of them have drawbacks. Very good, Ferdov's very nice. Okay, here's mine. Uh, in conclusion, there are logical reasons for both parenting styles. Those parents that give great freedom to their kids and those that do not. However, an extreme in each case does carry with it negative repercussions. So it is my belief that a balanced approach 
provides optimal nurturing of offspring, which in turn leads to a successful and prosperous future society. Um, okay, and I didn't really say successful too much in the essay, so I'm going to replace successful with uh, independent and confident. And I'm just going to take out this independent altogether, make it more concise to a confident uh, future society. Okay, so now uh, I'm just going to read the essay from the top. Okay, it's roughly about 300 words if I take out all of the unnecessary. Uh, here we go. So the goal of good parenting is empowering children to develop well. All humans are required to make millions of decisions throughout their lives and their capacity to do this has a direct effect on their happiness and success. Certain individuals restrict their children's decisions because they want to make sure that their kids always go down the right path. Others, however, give freedom of choice to their kids so that they develop independence. I believe that a balance of both whereby parents guide their children's decisions is best for children's development. Certain parents control their children's daily decisions on diet, clothing, exercise, and learning. because they believe that they know better what has beneficial results and they desire to minimize harm and maximize benefit for their offspring. I noticed that my friend Andrew never allows his four-year-old son Alex to eat what he desires. Instead, he is always feeding him with fruits, vegetables, and fish. Otherwise, Alex would eat chocolate for lunch, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay. Always make corrections where you see them. There we go. All right. In light of this notion, many parents encourage their children to make choices for themselves and to learn from their own mistakes by allowing them to eat, wear, and watch whatever they want. My friend Susan lets her eight-year-old son Tim watch violent superhero cartoons because she feels that he enjoys this more than watching educational shows and that he can learn right from wrong in other ways and develop a sense of independence quickly. However, at times this can be risky as highly independent children may encounter much conflict during their upbringing in society. Therefore, I believe that the optimal approach for children's decision-making process is to give kids the ability to choose within certain parameters and with feedback. In this way, children are not only kept safe and happy, but also encouraged to develop critical thinking and self-reliance, which is of great benefit for them and society. In fact, with my four-year-old daughter, Sabella, I always discuss options for food and entertainment, whereby she gets to choose from a healthy selection. As a result, I feel that she is confident in making her own choices while developing nicely, both mentally and physically. In conclusion, there are logical reasons for both parenting styles, those parents that give great freedom to their kids and those that do not. However, an extreme in each case does carry with it negative repercussions. So it is my belief that a balanced approach provides optimal nurturing of offspring, which in turn leads to a confident future society. Okay, um, so that is the end. Now, uh, the essay is okay, I think it would get a band nine this way. I do think it could be even better. I think there's a bit of redundancy that if I went through it carefully, I could take out some unnecessary information, make it even more concise instead of 310 or so words, make it 290. Okay. Um, but that's it. That's how you do it. So that's how I would approach this essay. So again, careful with uh, covert topics. Uh, identify the rare cases where you might need three body paragraphs where it makes more sense, okay? And thank you, Abhishek, for sending this uh, essay question. It was a long one. I mean, you can tell it's going to be a longer essay when you got a lot of content in the question. Uh, coming up in about 30 minutes, we will continue our speaking practice from yesterday with part three and four, sorry, not speaking, listening, our listening practice 
from yesterday with part three and four of the listening section. You're very welcome for Dobbs. You're welcome, Ois. Have an awesome, awesome break. And hopefully I'll see all of you in half an hour and 30 minutes uh, for some more IELTS with me. I'm Adrian signing out from Budapest for now. See you shortly. Bye.